Ladies and gentlemen, this guy says we had genetic text functioning as a genetic code. Not this guy, but the guy who's about to speak. That's what he says. We had genetic text functioning as a genetic code. Really That's was a pure, it was, it was pure information. It, it, this is a genuine information storage system. DNA is a genuine information storage system. It stores information, okay? Crick, by the way, was a code breaker in World War II. The guy who discovered it was a code breaker. So this, this is a fascinating is an application of the information science system like the biology. So information science was used to discover DNA. Code breaking knowledge was used to discover DNA. Information science. Now what we this is and this is the argument that I make is that what we know from experience is that information whether we find it in a hieroglyphic inscription hieroglyphic inscriptions would be made by humans or a paragraph in a book or a paragraph in a book would be made by humans. Uh, information embedded in a radio signal. Information in a radio bit of, uh, signal would be made by humans unless it were a natural radio signal, which would have no information embedded in it. Or in a section of computer code. Whenever a section of computer code would be made by humans. Is there any place where we find information that's not made by humans? Where we find information and we trace it back to its ultimate source, and whether we find it in a hieroglyphic inscription or a paragraph in a book or uh, information embedded in a radio signal, or in a section of computer code. Whenever we find information and we trace it back to its ultimate source, we always come to a mind. Whenever we trace it back to its ultimate source, we always come to a mind. Well, in the ones you listed, but why didn't you list DNA? DNA is information in nature. We can't trace that back to a mind. DNA is a total and utter mess that's come about randomly. DNA is a, is, you know, they, at one point they thought 90% of our DNA was just junk and only 10% of it was actually being used. Do you remember those days? DNA is a random mishmash that happens to work. And if it didn't work, we wouldn't be here. Or uh, information embedded in a radio signal or in a section of computer code. Whenever we find information and we trace it back to its ultimate source, we always come to a mind not a material process. Really? What about DNA? And what I do in the book, in Darwin's Doubt, and my prior book, Signature in the Cell, is show that these uh, undirected evolutionary mechanisms that have been proposed as an explanation for the origin of information fail for various reasons. We've talked about the reason the Darwinian mechanism fails, because it can't search the space when it's so vast. The, the odds are overwhelmingly against it. So if we, if we, from a materialistic evolutionary standpoint, don't have any explanation for the origin of the information that's necessary to build new biological form. So you look at it from the view of information and mathematics, and you say this vast, vast space cannot be, uh, there's no way to get through this vast, vast space. Well, I'll tell you what, we have evidence that there is a way to get through that vast space, and the evidence is the fact that life has evolved and we are here. So you need to rework your theory, boys. Sorry. Fail. Morons. Fail.